we got to make sure that they're all doing well. Uh, if one does get sick, we got to make sure we can fix that. We also do water quality testing in here. That's what those bottles up against that wall are for. Uh, we have to have a different bottle for every single exhibit to make sure that no cross-contamination happens. Uh, if we did have cross-contamination and there was a problem in one of the tanks with levels of, say, ammonia or acid or something like that, uh, we wouldn't be able to tell where it came from, which would be bad, because we need to know. Uh, since this is an aquarium, about 80% of our animals do live in water, <laughs> so we got to watch uh, very carefully to make sure that water meets their standards. Um, so things we test for, like I said, are acidity, so pH. Um, we, I've seen members of the display staff carrying around a ton of baking soda to kind of even out the acidity, which is pretty funny. Um, things like salinity, uh, so if something lives in a tide pool, it's going to be less salty than, say, the shark tank. It's a little bit different. Um, and we have a hot board right up there that has uh, two of our exhibits on it that are being tested either multiple times a week um, or for really specific things. Most of our exhibits are tested around two times a week, the only exception being the tank we have with a live coral uh, exhibit in there. Um, so you can see those two up there, one's getting tested twice a week just for really specific stuff, and then T16 is getting tested every day. Uh, it must be a new exhibit or have a new animal in there to make sure that everything's evened out and good. Uh, the whiteboard next to that says treatment board on the top. You can see there is an animal down the side there. Uh, the two in black, Emilio and Seymour, are almost always on the treatment board. Uh, they are both sea turtles, which is pretty awesome. All the sea turtles we have here are unreleasable for one reason or another. They are all rescues. Uh, we actually have our own breeding programs and other ways to conserve our resources. So we recycle about 90% of our water here, and most of our animals are either born and raised in captivity or rescued. We try to take things out of the ocean as little as possible. Uh, so Emilio is unreleasable. Uh, he lives in Atlantis with the sharks, so he is pretty tough. Uh, he's a big loggerhead sea turtle. He'll grow probably to be around 350 to 400 pounds by the time he's fully matured. Uh, but right now he's still a young guy. He's about 21 years old, so he's still a little bit sassy. Um, and when he was in his egg, someone or something messed with his nest, uh, and that actually hindered the development of his uh, back legs and his tail. So his back legs are a little bit smaller, and his tail is curled like a pig's tail. Um, which looks pretty funny, but messes with some other stuff in his body, so we give him mineral oil once a week uh, to keep his digestive system regulated. So if you guys have ever heard of Activia, you eat that to keep regular, it's kind of like the same thing for a turtle. Um, and then Seymour is the other one out there. She lives in Rainbow Reef with all these different tropical fish. Usually she'll come up during tours to say hello, she's really cute. Um, she is about 18 or 19, uh, and she'll probably be between 250 to 300 pounds when she's fully grown. Uh, and both, uh, or all of our sea turtles will probably be between 85 and 100 years old, eventually. So, so hopefully sea life is still here by then. Uh, it's kind of incredible. Um, and Seymour, when she was little, little baby turtle swimming around in the ocean, she got hit by a boat propeller. And that actually uh, put a crack in her shell, which is not good for turtles, obviously. Um, and so there's a pocket of air in there, and that's actually called bubble butt syndrome. Um, and that makes her butt float in the air out of the water when she's swimming. Uh, which is bad news for her because she kind of has to struggle to swim, but she's very, very sassy and very fun to play with. Uh, people actually have to go in and play with her every week, chase her around and hang on her shell and stuff, and she loves it. They did that on um, Sunday, I think, this week. Yeah, it was really cute. Um, but so she actually has a weight put on the back of her shell uh, as often as they can get it on there. Uh, they use basically boat putty to kind of make sure it stays on there. It looks like she has a little chocolate lava cake on the back of her shell. <laughs> um, and that keeps her evened out, makes it easier on her muscles and everything. Uh, the reason she is unreleasable is if we could get that weight to just stay on there forever, she could just go right out, swim, be happy, survive, all that. But since she's still growing, uh, parts of her shell actually still slough off or stretch out, and so the weight can't stay on. So we have to replace it all the time, and that's why she can't be released. So. But we're very spoiled, and we get to keep her and play with her and stuff, so that's awesome. Uh, and then I want to point out this Walgreens plaque over here, which is like the weirdest thing to point out in an aquarium. Um, but that is a plaque uh, regarding Oyster, another one of our sea turtles. 
she is all white um, because of pigment deficiencies and also she's never been able to go out in the sun or anything like that so she's never gotten the browns that uh, a loggerhead would usually have and she's very small um, and so when she gets mad she actually turns all pink her shell, everything, and her tongue too, which is like bright pink. So when they take her out to do doctor's visits and stuff, she's just bright, bright pink. It's really cool. Um, but they had to get a prescription for her once, and it was through Walgreens. And instead of making her card out to the aquarium, they made it out to Oyster the Sea Turtle. So that's what's on the card. The display thought that was pretty funny, and that's why we have that fact in there. So. All right, do you guys want to see a couple of artifacts quick before we head out? Yeah. Touch some sneaky little stuff. All right. So right over here, we have a couple of interesting things. This here, do you guys have any guesses what this could be? It is a stingray tail, you're right. Uh, and so the barb was right around here. I'll pass this around so you guys can see what this feels like. Pretty cool. Um, the barb actually broke off of that stingray tail and someone walked off with it. So, we don't have the barb for that one anymore, but we do have the smaller barb. Uh, these actually can clip off like fingernails, and I don't think they grow back. Um, so, some of our stingrays have their barbs clipped off, some of them don't, um, but they're all pretty friendly regardless. So, uh, And you can see the barb here, I'll pass this around too. When you get stung by a stingray, they do have a small amount of venom, uh, but it's pretty comparable to a bee sting. It's not going to kill you by any means. Um, and the barb, when it goes in, it doesn't hurt as bad as when you try to pull it out. There are actually little inverted saw blades on the outside, so if you gently tug on your finger, you can feel it catch on your skin. Um, so it's not good news to just pull one of those out. You have to go to the emergency room to get it removed, which is pretty intense. Uh, the southern stingray, which we have this tail from, these can get to be about six feet across. So they can be the size of your What's dinner this table. Bar? Yep, that's the bar. That's from a smaller one, though. I'll see that maybe. It's pretty, pretty intense. Um, a lot of people ask us about Steve Irwin, too. Uh, he got stung right in the heart, which is, you know, obviously the worst place you could probably possibly get stung. Um, and then also his assistant pulled the barb out instead of taking him to the hospital. So there was a very slim chance they could save him, but there was still a chance. So unfortunately, he didn't turn out. Um, and actually, no one knows what kind of stingray killed him. So that's kind of interesting. The great mystery. <laughs> All right. So that's pretty cool. This is the opposite end. This is the mouth of a southern stingray. You guys can pass that around and check it out. Uh, they actually don't have teeth in there. When you feel, it kind of feels like a hundred little tiny teeth kind of folded over. Uh, those are called grinding plates. Um, do you guys have any ideas what kind of fish stingrays like to eat? They don't eat minnows, no. They could if they could catch them. Um, they eat uh, things that have hard shells like clams and mussels. Do stingrays have arms? No. Uh, things like other things that eat clams and mussels, like sea stars, actually are strong enough to pull open the shell uh, with their little tube feet on all their arms. Uh, stingrays don't have any claws or arms or anything like that to pull them open, so they have to grind the shell off. So they have those grinding plates, so they suck up the clams and mussels, they grind all the shell off, they swallow the good parts, and they spit out the other parts. Oh, that's nice. So, yeah. And so again, you can hand feed stingrays. Um, obviously, you wouldn't want to get your finger in there if they can grind off clam shells. Uh, but they're, they're pretty safe otherwise. <laughs> All right, and then one more thing I'll talk about before we go into the kitchen. Make sure we're on schedule. Yes. Okay, do you guys have any guesses what this is from? Stingray. It looks like it's from a honeycomb stingray. Yes. What about you? It looks like from a, like, a kind of array. It does look like it's from a kind of array. Uh, a lot of people get cheetah it. Ray? A cheetah ray? No, it's not from a cheetah ray. <laughs> this is actually from a shark. And a lot of people would say, leopard shark, right? That seems logical. It's got spots. Actually, it's from a zebra shark. Uh, zebra sharks are born with stripes that turn into spots. And then leopard, er, uh, yeah, leopard sharks do the opposite, where they're born with spots that turn into stripes. And so I don't know if they like teamed up from the beginning, and they're like, oh, we're going to trick everyone, or what? But, um, sorry, that was a really lame joke. Uh, so you guys can do this, too. Um, it's got kind of little rough stuff all over the top of it. Uh, those are called dermal denticles, or skin teeth. And those basically help hold the shark's skin in place. Um, it would be really weird to have teeth all over your skin. I don't think I would enjoy that. Uh, they need it, though. Um, and also, before sandpaper was invented, they would harvest shark skin and use that instead. So, it's like really
really really fun. Uh, they're really hard because they've been um, dehydrated. They're like